Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Hi. Okay, that is tepid. <laughs> I said good afternoon. Hey. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to Hustle and Flow Real Talk. I'm making it. I am your moderator, uh, Cypher Tier. And uh, just a reminder, this panel is being streamed, so we get to Q&A. Please remember that. Uh, I also have other housekeeping slides that hopefully will make you laugh. Um, everyone's going to introduce themselves, but first, uh, just a reminder, I am not going to read this at you. Y'all are adults. You can read it in the program app, because I've been to too many places where people have literally read PowerPoints word for word at me, and I've <laughs> left. That is boring. Um, but you know, we may talk about things that have happened to us that are upsetting to us as con content creators or slurs that have been thrown at us, other things. So you know, please self-care if things get too much for you. Do what you need to do. And uh, I'm going to actually start at the end with Kiwi. Please introduce yourself. Oh, my. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm not Wait, sure. Is your mic on? Uh, oh, no, there we go. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> there we are. OK, thank you so much. I got you, gamer. <laughs> <laughs> I am Kiwi on the sticks. I am a Twitch partner and ambassador. Mm -hmm. I've been streaming for about five years now. And I have a background in entertainment, in production, um, volleyball and all types of things, whatever I can get my hands on, I have been um, a huge participant in. I'm really excited to be here with you today with all my panelists here, and I hope that we can share some useful information uh, that I've picked from the cobwebs of my brain. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Damian Haas. I'm a voice actor, Twitch streamer. Uh, you may also know me from the YouTube channel Smosh. Um, I, you know, like Kiwi, I've been sort of doing everything that I could and exploring all these different avenues, and those are the three things that I've landed on for introductions. Um, so there you go. Yeah, let's uh, try to keep it short. Uh, <laughs> hello, everyone. I'm Amir Hamza, a.k.a. Dimples and Dice, Twitch streamer, uh, professional GM, uh, award-winning storyteller, uh, and I'm glad to be here with my fellow panelists. Also, you're a PTI fellow. Oh, yes, I'm PTI fellow. You might have seen my picture around the convention center. And they can sign up and play games with you? Yes, yes we will you can sign up to play games with me. I will go last. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Lady Luck 34. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I am also a streamer and uh, occasionally tagged into Cause Chaos in TTRPG one shots. It's literally all I do. I show up, there's <laughs> chaos, I leave. That's it. Um, and I do a wide variety of things because I play games, I sew, I crochet. Um, those are all things that I do on my Twitch channel. Uh, and I have a day job in marketing, uh, which will probably come up at some point in, uh, when we talk about these things. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, super excited to, with this awesome crew. On to you. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Camilla Panda. My pronouns are she, her. I am a content creator and esports caster with a wild journey that started in robotics casting for now 10 years. I feel old right now, but I'm excited to be here. And on to Tanya. Hi, I'm Tanya DePass, better known as Cypher Tier Online. Um, I have a day job in game dev, but we're here to talk about the content creation side and variety caster. I do everything from playing games, mostly Baldur's Gate 3 since it came out. Um, look, mm -hmm. I, I joke that I'm now a Baldur's Gate streamer, no longer a variety streamer. Uh, I also have now gotten into Magic the Gathering thanks to this dealer, and uh, I make dice, I do mini painting and do other things, as well as occasionally do TTRPG streams. Oh. Dice. Yes, you make dice. This is my fault. Blame her for everything. You can tell <laughs> we all have known each other a while. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Mandy's dog that is going to give you the side eye if you do not follow our <laughs> housekeeping. Um, this panel is being streamed higher to everyone over on PAX 2, so please no recording from the audience, but please feel free to live tweet if we say something funny, poignant, I don't know about how much poignancy will come out of this panel, <laughs> but feel free to live tweet us and, and have a good time. And again, if anyone in this room has ever seen me moderate a panel, when you have Q&A, have a question. It is interrogative, it is not a story, it is not a... I need to have a comment. If you say you have a comment instead of a question, I will turn into a demon on this stage and tell you to leave. Um, 
And then please also be on topic. No random things that you just want to ask people. If you just want to ask us random questions, find us outside after the panel. Um, this is something I literally saw on Facebook this morning and decided to add to the deck. Because how many of us have accomplished something, done something, and someone said, oh, must be nice. You can raise your hand to your audience. It's fine. So how diminishing is that when someone does that to you? Anybody really quickly? Is that, is, is that your answer? No, no, it's like, it's a thing. And I've done it before. So, you know, it's, you, you think about it, but like, man, to get most of the places you've gotten, you've had to bust your ass. And then you're like, yeah, you can get here potentially by doing the same thing, but it doesn't come without work. Yeah, and I think when, whatever the it is, whatever you've, whatever you're doing now, whatever you've like made it to do, that also has a lot of work involved in the actual now of it, not just getting mm -hmm. to it. And so when someone says something like that, it used to like hurt quite a bit, but now I sort of look at it with a mindset of like, you don't even know how much work it is now, you're really far away from that, so I, I, I get it in a way. Like, it's not cool to just say it to someone, but it's more of like, mm, you don't know what you're saying right now, so it's not like a pass, but it's more of like a, okay, end of, end of issue, you know? End of discussion, we're done. Here. Yeah, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. Kiwi, anything? Yeah, I also was gonna say that people have said things like that, it must be nice to me. And of course, my initial thing was to be defensive and be like, you don't know what I've been through and whatever. <laughs> but also at the same time, it was kind of a revelation to me that maybe I could afford to be more transparent with the people who have an eye on my progress or how I'm developing in my career. So maybe that was more of an indication that I could show more of my process or that I could show more of my like failures and, and just announcing I'm so successful, I do all this stuff may not be the whole picture of what I'm actually experiencing. And so, um, of course, balancing being able to be transparent with my community, but also sharing the hard stuff as well, because people do need to know that things are hard and that you're not just succeeding all the time. Um, I, d I don't want to be coming across as someone who's like just perfect and successful or whatever. I definitely want people to know that this is very real and that there are failures and shortcomings and things all the time. So. Um, comments like this actually have inspired me to be more like open about the journey. Makes sense. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Either of you before we move on? I was going to say, I've always viewed it as they just didn't quite understand how much work went into it. Yeah. I also think, uh, not mentioned in my intro, I spent a number of years podcasting and covering the video game industry. And uh, we see an equivalent now, especially for anybody who streams or works in the content creation space, where like part of that industry is occasionally you get like press or promo items and people are always like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I had that or I wish I was you or like those sorts of things. And you're like, okay, but this is a function of the work that I'm doing. Like this is oftentimes a job. It seems like fun when you're looking at it from the perspective of, hey, this person's up on Twitch playing a game. It's, maybe they are playing for fun. I have a day job, so for me it is for fun. But for a lot of people, that's their job. It is work. And so it, there was always this disconnect of seeing that where it's like, ooh, yes, free stuff is cool. Go to a con and get swag. Uh, but <laughs> that is not a function of like what you're doing here when you're working towards some goal uh, or some measure of success that you're looking to have. It's often I'm doing my job when I post a photo of an item I got as a, you know, whether you're sponsored or it was a promotional gift or something of that nature. And you usually know because they're putting hashtag sponsored or hashtag ad on it. So like it's really clear that that is a function of the job and I don't know that everybody really makes that connection. True, so let's get into the meat of it of talking about what does successful even mean? Because I think a lot of people see us with either, you know, like Amir is the Packs Together Intersection Fellow. Someone may look at you and go, oh, why are you the intersection fellow? Why can't I do it? Or why you? Because to them, that is a measure of success. Kiwi is amazing and does like dope streams. And, and this is not comparing, this is just a fact. You know, Kiwi always has like, you know, in the triple digit CCV, so does Damien. 
And I could, I could easily go, oh, well, why aren't I like that? Why don't I have that? But you all have put in the work. You have done the work to have a community that shows up no matter what you're doing. So of the things on the screen, I just wanted to talk about kind of what is, what is everyone's measure of success? And I'm actually going to flip back and start with <laughs> Camilla since we, we ended there. I, for me, my like measure of success is being able to have some type of measurable impact. So it's not like being a Twitch partner, it's not like having a thousand viewers, it's did I inspire someone to be a better person that day or did I work an event that is going to improve someone's life in some way? I am a big charity person. So if I can just even spread the word of like, hey, there's this great charity that provides necessary stuff for kids, adults, whatever, and they can now, a viewer has discovered this charity and share it with someone in their family, friends that could use that kind of stuff, then I feel like I had a successful stream, successful broadcast, whatever type of successful thing that I am aiming for. And I think something too, when we talk about success, is there's, I guess, you know, popular success, and then there's success for you individually. And I think, uh, it's not always well understood. Like there's a successful stream, there's a successful charity fundraiser, there is what to me is fulfilling in saying that I am a success at something that I am doing. Uh, and those could be three different but very intertwined things. So similarly, every time that I do a charity fundraiser, if I get to bump my goal once, I've won, I've done it. That's what I wanted because I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, driving impact for a charity. Uh, if somebody comes out of one of my streams and is you know, they liked the game and now they want to check it out. They had a good time. We did something silly like, you know, have an argument about whether keeping your friend as a werewolf is ethical. Uh, you know, like, it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> she knows. Um, and so success can be short term. It can be in that moment. It can be broader. Like, I want to make being a streamer a job, you know, those sorts of things. So, like, you have to be able to just define your success first. Like, what does success look like? And then work towards it and ha make sure you're having like those little wins along the way. Yeah, I think uh, the defining it is really an important part because like it can, and that can change. Right? Yeah. When I first started streaming, I was like, yo, one person is watching me. This is the coolest thing ever. I'm entertaining one person who decided to find my channel. Out of all of the stuff you can watch on the internet, they came to see me. Then that expanded. I was like, all right, well, hopefully we can get reach out to more people. And then when I started doing tabletop, I was like, I started doing Vampire the Masquerade screen streams because I didn't see anybody who looked like me doing them. I was like, I want to see more people like me doing these things. And now I literally have people come to me and tell me, I started doing Vampire as a storyteller because of you. That is success for me. Not money, not free things. It is a success because I see more people, more groups that look like the group that I put together doing their thing now. And that has been like the biggest point of pride to me. Like I can measure success in a bunch of different ways, but having people say, you inspired me to do a thing, I, I can't get past that one. That one's like the top of the mountain for me. So anything else is just like icing on the cake. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, the definition of success kind of should always be shifting um, because becoming laser focused on something is something that I have not experienced in a healthy way before. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but you know, it brings me back to the first topic where the theoretical person saying to you, it must be nice, you're talking about two different measures of success where you're thinking about your hard work if you're receiving that and you're like, oh, you're commenting on all my hard work. You're not realizing how hard I've worked, but they're commenting on opportunity because a lot of people do work very hard but don't have the opportunity to put it in places where that work is seen. Um, so for me, my definition of success has always changed as my circumstances have changed. You know, now that I have a streaming platform that's available um, that affects things, you know, I want to know if I'm being consistent, if people are showing up and enjoying it. Um, before, my measure of success was, can I scrape out enough money for rent this month? <laughs> 
please, sorry, mom, I have to call again. I know this is the second time this year, oops. Um, and even that was lucky to be able to do. You know, it's, so yeah, right now, I'm the busiest I've ever been professionally, and I'm very happy with that, but that's left zero time for personal life. So I'm successful in one area where I'm not in the other, um, and that's okay. That's okay. So, yeah. I love that, because that Thank is you. exactly how I feel about success in general, is just that it's kind of um, ever-changing for me. And uh, a lot of times, outwardly, I know that success will be to someone else, like how many awards I've won or my titles or if they think I make money or not. And I can't, you know, that has nothing to do with me, what other people are assuming about my own success. Um, but personally, I think that my success is whether or not I've been able to convey the idea or the feeling or the environment that I intended to. Mm. And so if somebody notices that my background lighting matches my eyeshadow, which matches my mug that I have, that's a success to me because I'm thinking, wow, I was able to communicate this, you noticed. And I love when people notice small things that I put places or when I'm able to actually cultivate the mood that I intended to, or when I actually was able to like land a joke and it was, you know, it's stuff like that, that gives me the will to keep going. Mm. So I feel like my successes are very much tied to my motivation to keep going. Do I want to keep evolving in this thing? And um, it, that success I know I kind of had in the rear view mirror is kind of what keeps me going forward. So strangely enough, I can really only tell if I am successful to myself by looking back at what I've already done. Um, but just having the motivation to keep going is how I define my success. All set. To add something to that, it's really good whether you uh, prefer digital or physical to like keep a folder of wins. Yes. Keep like something you can go back and be like, yeah, I did that. And it was great because those are little things that can help you. Success is, as you all have said, ever changing. And sometimes you're going to have failures or you're going to feel down because you haven't gotten to the thing that you wanted to. So having those little moments that you can look back on of, or, or maybe big moments that you can look back on that are like, yeah, I did this thing and it was great, uh, is something I always recommend to people, uh, personally and professionally, both. <laughs> Uh, for me, it's interesting because I, I, I was very much a lightning in the bottle success because I legit was just mad about video games one morning before going to my day job in higher ed. And for, no, seriously, that's literally where I Need Diverse Games came from. And by the time I got to work, it had started to trend and things like that. And again, I was just mad about games because I think we can do better and should do better. And... Some people would go, well, I've never heard of you. Like, as I did things, I podcasted, I would do blogs, I would start doing diversity consulting, and now I work in the industry. Like, I was in the industry, but I'm at a studio. And it's one of those things where people go, well, I want to be where you're at, or why do you get to do this? And I'm like, here's a decade of things that I've done. There are many months and many years where I was like, ooh, rent, rent's looking a little tight. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be okay? And, and, you know, I didn't have anyone that I could go ask other than my patrons to go, well, if, if you like the content I do and want to keep me housed so I can make more content, here's where we are. And, you know, now I'm in a much better position. Or, you know, like, we'll talk about it on the next slide, but when I got to be a Twitch partner, I've been streaming for 10 years in November. I will have been a partner for seven of those years in November. And again, people see that little purple check mark and they feel a very much a way about it. And actually, you know, let's just transition to talking about that. Because I see a lot of my content creator friends in the audience. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be real fun. <laughs> so, and yes, that asterisk, asterisk is there on purpose. Because I, I thank Mandy because I had something real, real salty earlier. And because <laughs> I, I have thoughts about check marks on certain platforms. Um, but, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, I don't know if you can get one on TikTok, but now you can basically buy verification. And to me, that has devalued it, because initially on Twitter, it was to show that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. So if you're a celebrity, you're someone of note, you're a news person, so other people cannot go and impersonate you. However, now it's like, I'm going to sell you the same ugly bra five times in your TL under different accounts, at least on Twitter mm. and Facebook and Instagram too, because they are the same product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'll probably turn it over to you, Mandy, first talking about brand deals, sponsorships, because of your marketing background. 
Um, and then just recognition by others. So, and this isn't, hopefully this isn't weird, but other than those of us on stage, how many people have been recognized either by a community member or someone as you're walking around PAX? Just raise your hand. Is that weird to you? Hey, all right. Hey, be honest, I'm not your therapist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna start it with Mandy because you know, like you do have a marketing background and and yeah. you think about this. It's it's also interesting. I've been around the space for 15 plus years now, and it's evolved because if you looked back years, the FTC guidelines weren't quite the same, so you wouldn't necessarily see things like hashtag ad or hashtag sponsorship on um, posts and things. So like it's a little more obvious now. And there's a little more talk about what it looks like, but I think when you're considering things like brand deals and sponsorships or even doing panels, uh, it is a really, really big world. <laughs> there are a lot of companies, there are a lot of brands. And so oftentimes like, oh, this person's sponsored or maybe they're part of an affiliate program. Uh, not everybody quite understands the differences in those levels, what they mean as an association to that company or that product, whether it means they get paid or whether they just get a little bit of a kickback if you buy something from that company using their link. And um, that a lot of these companies, as the world has changed, uh, I could have a whole rant that we're not gonna do now about the progression. <laughs> we have 40 minutes, how long does everyone have? <laughs> uh, but about the progression of uh, how companies exist in the world, the you know advent and the acceleration of technology and social media, and what that means is a lot of them have uh, you know influencer managers or teams that are just about working with creators in the space and getting visibility for their product. Like there's entire programs structured around it, um, and so as a result of that, there is a higher degree of visibility for anyone who's online to this idea of having brand deals or sponsorships. Like they get it in the sense of they see it to the people with the people they follow, but they maybe don't understand the nuance of how it functions. And it creates that, you know, misconception like, oh, well you're sponsored, so you must be making so much money. Like I get a $50 kickback every three months, y'all. Mm -hmm. $50, you're doing good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I should also you. contact you. Dinner's on you. <laughs> Um, and so, like, that's the one thing is, even, like, being on panels, anyone can submit a panel. If you keep looking, they'll put out the call for panels ahead of a convention. You don't have to be very well-known or recognized to do that. Actually, I encourage you. You have a cool idea, submit it. You never know what people like. But there is this kind of false equivalency that comes from that. Okay, my rant is done, thank you. <laughs> That's great. Actually, I, I wanna ask Damien, because yeah. I mean, people know you from small and from other stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, like there is clearly a community that's built around your other work. You know, now you're doing voice work and you're in a popular D&D animated show. Yeah. So how is, how is one of those things, because I'm sure, and we can, we can touch on parasocial, there was a panel, there were two panels about it earlier, but we can touch on that as well. But you know, how do, how does that, affect you, are there people who you think, I mean, we've all seen it, where people gravitate towards you because they think if they are around you, they will be successful as well? Or, you know, the hangers on, the creepy ones? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean I've been a voice actor for like 12-ish years, and I, I heard a quote the other day that I really dug, um, and I wish I could credit them, but I don't remember the name, but it was something like, the path to your dreams doesn't have to look anything like your dreams which is awesome. Um, so that's sort of why now people are like, oh, you're starting to do voice acting, you're starting to do all these things, but they're all sort of irons that have been in the fire for a very long time, um, which has been, you know, just all sort of coming to a head right now. Um, in terms of people being sort of hangers on or fair weather friends, I feel like I am relatively okay at sort of clocking when that happens. Mm. And I think it's also like, there's a very difficult balance to find between networking and being friends with people who would get it because they're in your industry and you have a lot of similar things that you can sort of share versus people who just sort of want something. And I think, I don't know, people get a bad rap in general and yes, they're out there, the like hangers on, I guess, to borrow your word, but I don't, that's not something I experience very much. And I think at this point in time when we 
are very vocal about parasocial relationships and mm -hmm. mental health and all these different things, these buzzwords that come up in streams, yada, yada, yada. People are a little bit more just aware, mm -hmm. I think. I, I know at least I am. Um, and if anything, I have to be a little bit more trusting of folks. But it's, it's easy to limit access and be like, hey, this is a little bit too much. Or, and people tend to listen to it, and if not, then you have your 100% truth and the fact that like they need to be cut off. Um, but yeah, everything's honestly been really chill. And I've also, it does help that in my Twitch community, I have had people cross lines before. So for the past few years of streaming, I've had a very hard and fast like, hey, you know, we can't go into this topic or like, hey, I don't answer DMs. If there's anything that you need to say to me, you can say it publicly. And if you feel like you can't say that thing publicly, you need to reevaluate what you think this connection is. Um, it's, it's okay to voice that and you're not gonna hurt the feelings of people who are safe to be around you. Yeah. yeah. Um, other thoughts from the panelists before we move on? And actually, before we go to the next slide, after you all answer, I am gonna define parasocial relationships mm -hmm. for you all. But Camilla, Kiwi, Amir, anything? I, I, I think one of my concerns, actually, when I first started doing this was like, I ended up being around people like you, Tanya, and I was worried that like people would see me that way. Like, am I a hanger on or trying to worry my way in? And I, it's a constant one of those stressors where you're like, I know this is not really happening, but maybe I'm thinking it. Like, maybe, maybe they think of this of me. You know, the anxiety warriors, it happens. Um, but I learned a lot from people who had been doing this for a while, and I took what advice they were willing to give to help me move forward. And I, whenever I've had someone else who thought, like, hey, you're doing your thing, like, I've, I've been like, let me help them too. Mm -hmm. So, like, where were you talking about, like, it, markers of success is, like, I just want people around this space to like respect you as a person, like a full person, not just a picture you see on the internet that you're chatting with from like this very limited perspective. Because once that gets lost, that's when it gets weird. Uh, and th 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 this ties into success by like, you are making sure that you're defining this, like your relationships with other people and yourself. <laughs> yep. Anybody else? Okay. So uh, quickly before we move on, because we keep saying parasocial relationship, how many people know what that means or think they know what it means in the audience? Okay, good number of hands. Um, so the, the quick and dirty definition is you think that there's more of a relationship than there actually is. So let's say any of us who stream, or you know, act or, or things like that. You think because I watch you, support you, I'm in your stream, I give you money on Patreon, that we're best friends and we're so close. When it is by its nature a transactional relationship. There are people who think because they give you five, 20, $25 a month, that, you know, that entitles them to your time or they just feel like they are closer to you than you realize. I've been, I'm a day one, I've been in your stream since you started and had two people and now I'm here when you got like 400 every day. Cool, that doesn't mean that we're actually friends. And that's not being cruel, that is a reality also to keep people safe. Because there have been too many instances, especially with the advent of social media and people thinking, I follow you on social media, I know your whole life. I can guarantee you do not, of anyone in this panel, anyone in this room, because what we curate on social media, whatever platform you're on, is a curated look at someone's life. It is not every single thing. Unless you're some weirdo that tells your whole life, then that's on you. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> extra tip there. If you do share your whole life, maybe consider keeping some things uh -huh. just for you. Mail it in. Or have a private account where like five people can read it and they're your homies. I've seen some wild things on the internet. I predate it. It's been too much some days. I'm just letting go of some secret thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Go. Um, this one is for the four people of color on this panel. If any of you say there's not four people of color on this panel, I will come fight you. Um, but all the other brown folks in the, in the room, raise your hand. We got to do better than this. We in Boston. There's more black folks here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have no chill. I'm not at work. I don't care. Um, but, you know, this is something specific to people of color where 
we have to work two, three, four times as hard to get maybe a third of the recognition. I have done a lot and I've been very fortunate, but I'm sure that, you know, a mask white peer would probably be much further along. If they made a game, they would be, VCs would th be throwing money at them, things like that. So it's just something to think about if you, hopefully you do have some black friends, or as Cat Williams said, go get yourself some black friends. <laughs> if you don't have any, then that's a you problem. But I just wanted to remind people that it's not the same for all of us. Um, and for many of us, you know, like when we get featured in things, you know, like, um, you know, Kiwi and I are both in the Black Guild at Twitch. I don't know. Are you in the Women's Guild, too? Me? Yes, you. Oh, no. Okay, well, we're both in the Black Guild at Twitch. Wait, I'm not in that one, either. What, you're not? I know. <laughs> Wait, I know. hold on. If anyone from the Black Guild at Twitch is watching, y'all got to fix this. Get Kiwi in there. Um, but we're, so we're both Black streamers. And there are things where, you know, we can talk about things or if we get to do an activation, stuff like that. People are like, well, why'd you get to do it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe because I do better content than you. Suck it up. <laughs> Look, <laughs> there are people that get real mad when it's not them. You know, yeah. uh, shout out to Big Cheese, who did a very nice shout out to me and Twitch tweeted it. The replies on that tweet were so salty oh my God. about why, why this, why this person, you forgot who at random streamer 2588 whoever that nobody has heard of except their five friends. And it's those kinds of things where they get mad and it's like, well, you forgot so-and-so. No, they just don't know who this person is. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. So be mindful when you have these interactions, when you talk to friends about success and sharing, yeah. that for your friends of color, it is a much different experience. Any of our... Other folks Can want to I say add something to that. Uh, um, of course, I was just gonna say um, I was fortunate enough to be chosen to be an ambassador for Twitch, which was like the most exciting thing ever. I loved it. Thank Congrats. you so much. I'm gonna cry. So. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. I've been working toward that for years, and I feel super blessed and grateful to have gotten that. But uh, they posted it on Twitter, and I was just being my normal goofy self in the announcement videos, and the comments were vile. They were like, "Who is this?" I've never heard of this person. And my favorite, get this old lady off the screen. <laughs> Which I was like, oh I'm my sorry, God. what? <laughs> Hold on. This old oh. lady. <laughs> which, is, which, you know, no, it doesn't like offend me, but it's always so funny that I have to be like, you've never heard of me? Well, now you have. And, and like, you know, it just, it's like, it's not a comment that helps anyone. It, I'm not even really sure what they intend to do, but it's so funny whenever I am featured with something and it's just like reply after reply about how terrible I am or old. I'm like the crypt keeper. And they're just like so upset to see me there. Um, but definitely something like, you know, all of us, I'm sure, have had to deal with negative comments about the way we look, mm -hmm. the way we speak, um, why we were chosen for an opportunity. And you have to be really diligent about what you absorb and, and what you're able to shield yourself from because it gets really wild out here. Yeah, I just don't care. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm, Amen. That's a mood. I'm too tired for this stuff. Like, I, I remember when I got picked to, uh, to run a game for Roll20Con and some of the comments for me running that game. And I was just like, do y'all eat, like, why? Why do y'all bother to, to come to my comments? Because if y'all follow me in any way, I, I'm either gonna roast you or I'm gonna ignore you. So <laughs> pick, your, pick your poison. But like, it doesn't serve you any purpose. Like, mm. I, I, I hustle my ass off. I do, I, I run a lot of stuff. I do a lot of stuff. And if you wanna do it, do it, but don't, go bringing your envy to somebody else. Just do the work. Yeah. Period. Yeah, can we get some snaps for that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about the myth of overnight success. We've talked about it, but I want to focus on it for a few minutes because a lot of people, like he said, it's like, well, I never heard of you. Cool. I'm sorry for you then. <laughs> um, so I want to hear from like Camilla because you haven't talked much. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> no, this, this is how I DM. This is mm -hmm. how I host. I mm -hmm. want to make sure everyone gets to speak. I can say, I don't know where to start with this one because I've had a lot of folks who are overly confident in saying to my face at conventions like, oh, you, I've never heard of you before. You probably only got in because you're pretty. 
And I have to pretend to be nice afterwards. No, you don't. <laughs> nope. You don't, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, overnight success isn't a thing because there's so much work. There's so, like, there's the late nights, there's the travel, there's, like, the con like years and years and years of just doing something because you love it. Like, for me, esports casting, I've been lucky enough to get gigs and be flown to places to do e like casting for like Valorant and a couple other games and I've had folks go well you just you've never really done esports casting this is like your third event and like I've been doing robotics casting for like nine years and that's volunteer work and I have done week, like six weeks straight of hosting and game announcing and I don't make money off of it and I finally had someone sit there and go, she's good at that, and maybe we can finally do eSports. So no one saw the up to point, mm. but now that I've had like a couple of gigs, folks are finally taking notice, but then they're still like, you just showed up. I'm like, I've never just showed up. I just swapped to a different industry. That's all. Just made a little bit of a change. What? You, you did all that and people just now notice they're weird. <laughs> Wild. Wild know, concept. Right? Um, anything from this side of the table? And the next slide I'm just going to skip because I realized it's kind of reiterating what we're already talking about. Um, other thoughts? Yeah, if, if I may. Um, I think, like what I said before, having a lot of irons in the fire, they pay off at different times. And also they pay off in different ways. Like uh, for voice acting stuff, like I said, I've been doing it for 12 years, but I didn't have a lot of recognizable roles until more recently. Um, you know, I'd be doing like a Dunkin' Donuts radio commercial or something like that. Or maybe I was the talking dog on a T-Mobile commercial. Or there was a video game. I'm not going to say any specifics because someone ended up getting the role. But like I was up for a major role in a very well-known game that you definitely already know. Um, that I like finally almost booked and then the first like SAG voice acting strike, what was it, eight, nine years ago, I don't know, uh, came around and it was basically like, hey, you can't do this. And I was like, well, okay. And a, a couple years after that, I was working on an animated film as uh, with one of the m main roles that would have been released in theaters by a company that's very well known for big animation projects. And I was like, this is it, finally it's my thing. And then that uh, ended up going away. They were like, oh, we're not going to pursue the project. It got canceled. I was like, okay, cool. And now uh, a friend just sent me a TikTok of one of the characters I voice, and someone was like, oh, isn't that that guy from that YouTube channel? Like, oh, I didn't realize he's actually a voice actor. I thought he just, like, said that. And, like, yeah, it's weird how he's just started doing all this stuff. And I'm like, damn, like, you can't <laughs> stop people from thinking that, but, like, I really have been putting the nose to the grindstone for a long time. And again, I'm so lucky to have the opportunity to do it. I know a lot of people work really, really hard, but just you don't know what led up to what appears like overnight success. I want to add on to that, that it's the appears like overnight success, but it's also the reality of a lot of industries, whether it's content creation, whether it's video games or other things, where like there are specific people in specific roles that are very, very visible. They're the people that go do interviews. They're the ones that get to be at, you know, E3 on stage, rip, E3. Mm -hmm. um, or or I, the ones that get to accept awards during, you know, the BAFTA awards or things like that. And there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people doing the work that you don't see and you don't know the name of. And I think, like, that's the really big thing here is it's what kind of launches you into mainstream, whatever that might be, prominence could be just one project after you've spent years and projects and projects doing the work. And I think like that's the one thing is there's, there's going to be thousands of names you will never know unless you actually watch the credits on video games. Please do that for all of the many, many people that worked on them. Um, that you just will never know because they're not the people who get interviews with IGN. They're not the people that are, like, their name is attached to a big project the way that you probably know a good number of names of people working on Baldur's Gate 3 because they're very visible. So, like, that's the thing is the visibility is the disconnect for a lot of people. Yeah, and one thing I 
we're not going to go over this whole slide because it kind of repeats what we just talked about, but it's the third point. And it just reiterates, people follow you on socials, Twitter, Blue Sky, whatever we're using this week before Twitter burns down. <laughs> um, and they feel like they know you. Because, like, sometimes I will tweet more about what I'm doing, but, you know, and this is not to bring the mood down, but just last week I had to lock my Twitter and all my socials because people are terrible. And it's the, I literally shared a resource on dealing with harassment, which ironically got me harassed. So those are people who think, oh, you, you shared a thing, so you must think this, you must do this. So remember, what you see on Twitter, what you're even seeing on this hour on this panel is not the totality of who we are as human beings. Remember the people who voice things and act and do and stream are people. So that is one thing I will actually take away from this. Um, and then just a reminder about hypervisibility. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to talk. You're giggling. <laughs> but. We talk about this a lot because I'm very specific about my day job is my day job, and I don't talk about it when I'm streaming. I don't talk about it on my socials because that is completely disconnected from the me that is doing those things. And I think like that's uh, that idea of like what part of a person are you seeing? And it's usually just like one or two dimensions of their totality. Uh, and so we discuss this a lot where I'm like, I don't want to be on the internet 24 <laughs> seven. Um, but it does like have those layers of like, oh, I know so-and-so. Okay, well, do you know them or do you just follow them on Twitter? Mm -hmm. We finally, I, I got to meet somebody for the very first time in person uh, yesterday here at PAX East. And it was really funny because we were introduced and we were like, oh yeah, hi, nice to meet you. And two minutes later, I'm going, wait, I follow you on Twitter. Hold on a second. We've been interacting for years and we did not connect the dots until that exact moment. And I think like that's the thing where you, then we had the awkward like, oh wait, I'm, I'm not trying to make this weird, but actually we have spoken before, just not face to face, which is also really awkward. I have, and also pro tip, please don't walk up to people and go, I follow you on Twitter and then walk away. Yeah. Amir yes. and Mandy, can, and actually, I think everyone on this panel except for Damien can confirm it has happened to me at every convention. And I'm like, but but who are you? I, 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 is this was this just like a hi? I'm running away now. I may seem like it on the internet. I'm not actually that scary, unless you're rude to me. Then I will turn into a demon. Um, but I just want to talk about this for a little bit, and then. We are going to open it for questions. There is a mic in the middle of the room. Uh, so if you do have a burning question that is appropriate, short and a question, please stand in line. And then after we get through this slide, we will open the floor. Um, I want to make sure everyone else wants to, if you have things to say. I think it's complicated sometimes Lean when you're, uh, I think it's complicated sometimes when you're on the internet as like a visible person, like, because I don't share a lot of my personal life stuff on socials or streaming or anything like that, but I do like try to show more of a totality of my person. These are on that, like no judgment or anything like that. But um, I am me turned up to an 11 when I'm on the internet. Like I am an extra goofy version of myself. I, I bring that all up. And when people see you, sometimes they expect that. Mm. And that is not the energy I'm bringing at a convention most of the time, because I'm working and I'm tired. <laughs> uh, and I just don't have the energy to be me on Twitch uh, when I'm doing that, because I have set a scheduled time aside, I've eaten, I've had water, I'm chilling at my desk when I'm Twitch streaming. Here, I've run from one thing to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing, and I'm like, hi. <sighs> and, and so, like, keep that in mind, and, and, and you know, I mean, speaking of this, this thing right here, like, one of my first experiences of actually getting started on Twitch was right when hate raids were coming about. And here I was thinking, no one knows me. No one's going to stop by my channel. Oh, boy, that was not the case. I had to, like, lean into people like Tanya. I was like, how do we, how, what do I do in this situation? Like, 
they put buttons up and I had block lists and I was like, someone doxed me. They made their Twitch name my address to my house. And I was like, cool. This is what happens the more people see me, more stuff like this has happened to me. And I've been doing this for a long time. But then it just came to a head once I became more visible. And that is scary. I don't really know what else to add to it because it's just, it's scary because you're like, I just want to be a person, y'all. Like, I'm just another dude. <laughs> I think I have something relevant. There's something I've been explaining to my, like, non-content creator friends where uh, you can be famous enough where it's a problem, but you don't reap the benefits. Yes, that, yeah. that. <laughs> where, like, you will, you know, you'll have folks come to you and be like, I want to work with you, that's great, but then you go and you're on your stream and then someone tries to, like, dox your IP address or they're like, hey, I think this is where you live, and they are saying it not in a, like, I want to know where you live. It's more of a threatening aura. But it's really hard to navigate that, especially since for a lot of folks, like all of us, it comes sooner than you expect it to. Mm -hmm. Where you don't have 100 people watching you all the time. It comes when you have, like, five, ten folks, and all you're trying to do is just have fun with your friends, and someone goes, you don't look like a straight white man, and we have a problem with it, because for whatever reason, that's a problem. Kiwi, okay, any thoughts before we open up Q&A? Ugh, I'm tired. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm just so tired. Leave me alone. This is why it, it's just so difficult even being visible at all to me because there are certain things that are just like private and personal for me. However, I am more than willing to share things that affect my ability to get things done. I don't know if anyone out here deals with disability, um, your body changing in some kind of way that you don't understand, your brain and your body fighting each other. Um, just trying to figure out what is going on day to day is already a struggle enough. And it already makes me feel self-conscious being, you know, perceived while I'm not even understanding my own existence all the time. And so I have to be like, sometimes I'm just like, I just, I don't care. Leave me alone. Like I will shut the computer off and walk away right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I just get fed up being looked at in general a lot mm -hmm. of the time. Um, I, luckily, my community is really, really supportive of me being open about what I'm experiencing, but it's been a struggle to even be seen in a condition that, is, that I don't understand myself. And a lot of people have been mean about it or judgmental about it or, uh, you know, laughing at me because of things that I can't even explain myself, you know, as if I would choose to be tired or I would choose all these things I have to deal with. So it just in general, making sure that I am transparent with the people who matter to me. But also, like, I just don't like to share stuff that's too close to home because I never know who's watching or what their intentions are with me. Uh, and I don't want to be somebody's little pinata to beat up one day. And, you know, it's just, it's just a lot to, to even balance in the first place. But um, if anybody else is dealing with that kind of stuff, I have, you know, I have a lot of understanding of what you're experiencing, especially people who are like COVID conscious or if you're disabled or anything like that. I know that it's very difficult to even continue on in life in general a lot of days, um, especially with so many people looking at you or analyzing everything that you do or expecting things from you. Um, but just, you know, take it a day at a time. And if you're having those days, then you are having those days. And the best that you can give is, you know, if you can only give 5% of yourself one day, that is 100% that you are giving of yourself that you're able to get. So no matter what anyone says, when they're looking at you or judging you or whatever, just, you know, staying grounded and just <laughs> shut, out, shut all the other stuff out because that's really all you can do to kind of protect yourself. And just one thing I wanted to note about, you know, the, the first point on the, the slide is that you don't have to be a visible person. You don't have to be a person of color for someone to de delegitimize what you're doing. Yeah. Because they'll go, oh, well, I know that you know these people, and therefore you didn't actually do anything. You cut the line. Here's the problem with that. Anyone who knows you and knows your work, if they want to work with you, it's because you are quality. It's because you know what you're doing. 
anything else, if someone assumes that, it's like, oh, well, you just were, and I hate this term, it makes my soul leave a little bit. You were a Nepo baby, whatever that means. Uh, I know what it means, I just hate the word. Uh, <laughs> when people do that, it's like they're delegitimizing. They might as well say, well, you have no talent. You're um, lucky. The very first uh, studio event I went to, like community event, I was the only film presenting person there. And I had someone straight up say, oh, you must be the token woman they brought in to legitimize this. Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And uh, at that point, I was years into podcasting and I was years into being involved in the industry. And I was just sitting there going like, you are a fool and stop talking to me. And uh, I did speak to like the community manager on the side being like, mm, if that's the attitude you have, I don't wanna come back to this studio ever again. Please do not invite me in the future. Uh, but I think that that is like, you wanna say things are better and in some spaces they might be getting there. Um, but I think it is, it is kind of important to know what your boundaries are. The same way we talk about like success and to, to the point you're making about, uh, I remember reading somewhere that if you're giving 100% of yourself 100% of the time, then you are always running on zero. And I think it is fair to, you know, when you're having a low spoons day or when you're struggling with something, sometimes take that space for yourself. Um, and that's whether you're trying to uh, work up to your success or whether just individually like so important to please do. All right, so it's time for Q&A. We have eight minutes and minus seconds. So please Come line to up. the mic. Don't judge my dog side-eyeing all of us. <laughs> I love she it. judges me all the time. That will be me if you do anything <laughs> other than ask a question. You all laugh. I'm not kidding. He's not. Yes. Cool. Uh, so there's a lot of conventional wisdom about, you know, not maintaining social media presences because of the way people are. But in this industry and in this kind of career, is there any sort of advice you would have about the kind of social media presence you maintain, the time you have on it, and what you share on that, and whether or not that affects opportunities or creates opportunities? Ooh. Yes. Uh, it, I don't know. It can create opportunities. A lot of people I've connected with initially has just been through like, hey, we were following each other on social media and then we happened to meet in person at an event and now suddenly there's a door that is open that wasn't there before. Um, but I do think it's really important in the same way that we say like try to, you need to set your own uh, measure of success that you should consider and understand that it will change over time. Uh, what you are willing to share maybe on social media when you first start your account might not be what you want to share in the future. Um, but having an idea of like, is this a work Twitter? As an example, is this work social media that is just to share things you're doing on stream or what have you? Is this a personal account? Is it both? Like understanding what you want it to do for you is important. That That's marketing speak a little bit, but I think relevant here. Yeah, the, the, the short and sweet of it is define your persona. Like what, it, what are you going to be on your socials? Because that's what people are looking for. Yeah, and just, you know, you don't have to tell anyone about your personal life. Nope. Especially if it's just, this is what I do, here's my content, and decide what it is. And then adjust if mm -hmm. you tweet something or post something and it's attracting the people you don't want around. You can delete that and go, okay, new, noted, I'm not doing that again. And also, just in case we don't get to everyone there, we will be outside because we've got six minutes, so I don't know if we'll hit everyone, but uh, we will be outside in the hall after. But thank you for your question. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, I follow you on Twitter. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to out you. Don't start with me. Uh, I'll, I'll try to make this quick. You guys have uh, covered this in ways, but uh, I do a fraction of the work that you all do, and it, it's even that's tough for me. Uh, with the growing pressures of uh, social online presence, the communities, the hatred that we've been talking about, do you guys deal with fatigue? We talked about in your private lives, yes, but fatigue going on, you know, and then, and if so, how do you deal with that? Do you take breaks, vacations, you just can't do it, take a break? 
Um, I mean, I can answer if anybody else wants to jump in after me. I do, but I've also, I've, I've got the privilege of a day job. I don't have to stream again if I never want to, but I like streaming. I like content creation. Um, so I will just go, you know what? Not today. I'm going to go do laundry. I'm going to go back to bed because I normally go stream before I log into work every day. And sometimes I just talk to friends who get it because sometimes just that sounding board of other people who get it because I've discovered the hard way complaining on online just gets you the people that have never done this work, that don't understand it, and they think you are whining about, oh, poor you, people throw money at you to play games all day, which has never been the case. Um, anybody else want to hop in? We also just got the five minute mark. So, anyone I was, else? I was just gonna say, like, please take care of your mental health first. Like, if oh, yeah. it is a day where you are just not having, like, it, and you don't want to post, and you know it's not gonna be good for you, please listen to your head and your body. That, that should come first and foremost, even if this is a job. Yeah, I think that, like success, it's something that you're gonna sort of have to redefine with yourself as you go and constantly check in with what's okay. Um, I know that, like, for a long time, I worked, like, customer support, retail. I was a leather craftsman. I went through, like, I don't think I ever got out of the... Thank you. It was better than retail. Um, didn't pay better, though. Um, I think it... I never got out of that, like, starvation mindset of, like, uh-oh, if I don't take this opportunity, I don't know when that's gonna come through again. How am I gonna pay rent and get food? Um, so have those check-ins and really like figure it out. Like I'm supposed to go, I was supposed to go to a con next week and I'm like, what a cool opportunity. Travel, meeting people, there's a paycheck involved. And I had to turn it down because I'm like, I, I can't do three con weeks in a row. Who, who can do that? I can't. And it's just, it was the first time I had to really shut down a big opportunity, but you just have to be honest with yourself, I think. Thank yeah. you. I'm glad you're, you're here. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> so uh, I had a, a pretty good one for uh, s smaller uh, c uh, creators and such with, you know, the hustle and flow part of it. Um, what do you guys have for suggestions for how to self-promote and where to go do that other than just obviously Twitter where some of us might not have many or any followers? Um, you know, having just hit affiliate myself, I just wanted to know what's a good idea of places to go and how to grow my channel more. And I know plenty of other people here want to know what you guys find as a good way to go about self-promotion and growing your communities. And that's your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to take this one? Kiwi. Okay, so I'll make this a, a bit quick. But um, when I was first starting out streaming, I was trying to figure out how do I even get an opportunity when I'm like, I have no followers and no one even cares. But just starting to do that stuff on my own, like I'm a big deal. Hosting stuff on my own channel, like I'm a big deal. Asking someone if I can interview them on my channel so it can be like a talk show kind of thing, like I'm a big deal. Hosting some event that is put together, editing some stuff that's put together on my own channel, like I'm a big deal before I can even ask someone else. If, you know, because if you don't have the opportunities, then how are you going to justify that kind of stuff? So even with pictures, like having my own photo shoot instead of waiting for a photographer and for all these other like opportunities. Um, so I know that sounds probably counterintuitive, but just like continuing to do the big stuff yourself because you can do the big stuff yourself on your channel, like and, and it'll still be big, you know. Uh, it still shows your skills. It st still shows what you're capable of and everything like that. So just like believing in that process and keep pouring into it, keep posting it, keep streaming it and, and stuff like that. And I, I feel like organically over time that that helps you in the long run. Thank you. And Good also, old fake yeah. it till you make it. <laughs> um, and one thing for anyone in this room that streams, take the phrase small streamer out your mouth. Yeah. You a streamer. Well, take that phrase out of your yeah. mouth, your vocabulary, your Twitter header. And if I see any of you tweeting, I'm a small streamer at me, I will come find you. <laughs> um, we're at a minute even, so for the, for the folks in line, uh, please find us outside, because we want to do quick outros, but we will not just run off, we swear. Yeah. Uh, so very quickly, from the end, outros, what else are you doing at the con? Or are you just like, I'm done my panel, I'm out? Oh yeah, I'm done, I'm going to party now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, though, I appreciate it. Again, I'm Kiwi on the Sticks on all the socials. Y'all are welcome to my Twitch channel and all the other things anytime. I would love to have you in chat, and thank you so much for joining us today. 
Uh, thank you all very much. I'm Damian Haas on all the socials. I'll be joining Tanya for two more uh, uh, panels here at the con. I also have my own meet and greet uh, happening at 4 p.m. today and then 1 p.m. Sunday uh, in the back of the expo hall in the lineup area. I'd love to see you all there. I'm also selling delicious and dungeon prints of the character I voice, Laos. Uh, for me, uh, you can catch me in the PTI library uh, playing space tomorrow at t uh, 10.15 a.m. Uh, till 12 p.m. And then I'll also be uh, there again playing more space from 11 or 1.45 till 4. Uh, you can catch me on all the socials as Dimples and Dice. And I am playing on Ampistrano d and uh, on d and Jordan Lee's channel. And there'll be more stuff coming up. Just watch out for the socials. Uh, I'm on a panel tomorrow, 3 p.m. in Bumblebee, about being a content creator in this economy. I'm so sorry. And then a fun, <laughs> spicy panel about love, sex, intimacy, and agency in Baldur's Gate 3. Both Damien and Camilla will be on that panel with me. Um, it is starting at 9 o'clock, because we we about to get a little lewd up in here. It's going to be spicy. Uh, I'm Lady Luck 34. You can find me everywhere on the internet under that name. I also stream at a semi-regular schedule. Uh, and I will also be on one of the panels tomorrow at 3 p.m. talking about being content creators. And I'm Camilla Panda. You can find me on all platforms. I live stream on Twitch. I am also an esports caster. So if I am not currently streaming, it's probably because I am talking about Valorant in a very nerdy way. Um, Here for it. Yeah, and then I am also joining Tanya on one more panel as we discussed, and I have three additional panels, two are, three are tomorrow, and then one is Sunday. You are a brave nice. soul. <laughs> I, All right. I didn't realize what I did. <laughs> and also, if you have the app, please go write our panel. If you like these kinds of things, let PAX know so they know that you want to see more yes. content like this. Um, I don't have the QR code up here, but it's all around the convention center, and you probably will see it around. But thank you so much. Thank you for being a great attendant of thank audience. You everyone. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, everyone, for having a question. Except you, Nick. Bye, y'all. Happy packs. <laughs>